Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Wednesday, August 11th. It's 6 a.m. as I'm starting the video. As always, feel free to run the player at 1.25x. I think it'll really increase your efficiency and you won't miss a thing. Uh, equities are flat as a pancake. Uh, actually, commodities are very flat this morning as well. Um, the reason being we've got this big CPI print at 830, which has the potential of really uh, creating some, some fireworks. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Then we've got oil inventories at 1030. We've got uh, Rafael Bostic of the FOMC speaking at 1030. And then we've got Esther George of the FOMC speaking at noon. So uh, getting back to the CPI thing, uh, reading the reaction of, of whatever number that prints is, is a tough task, at least for me. I was thinking about it, you know, does it, you know, if it comes in hot, does that mean the Fed comes in faster? If it comes in soft, does that mean a gross scare? I it just, so many different permutations. I think it's better just to, I'm not going to sit here and try and speculate or, or, you know, give you if, if, if then this, then that kind of thing. I think it's just best to see how the market does react to it. And then we'll trade level to level like we always do. So let's run through, I'm going to go through our normal routine of hitting the indexes and the fat man names, but then I'm going to uh, run into the sector spider ETFs to kind of show you this emerging cyclical uh, rotation theme that we've been discussing and and uh, trying to position for uh, in the last few days. So here was the double bottom low. This is the 10-year treasury yields. We had a double bottom low down here uh, last week and then rates have really shot up over the last several sessions going from really like 1.15 all the way up to 1.34%. Now the next technical objective for rates is 1.4% and that's this line here. And you'll see that that 1.4% had acted as support for a while and then it acted as resistance right here. So I would be surprised if rates just motored right on through this 1.4% without uh, at least some hesitation and backfilling there. Um, also, what would be cautionary for those thinking that there's going to be a cyclical rotation would be for this to just come right back down below 1.3% and then start heading down again. That would be I think that would qualify as a massive head fake for uh, uh, for the cyclical rotation theme because what's going to happen is that's going to be bearish for banks and then you know I think tech would emerge again if uh, rates were to roll over but I don't expect that to happen we may get a pull into 1.3 maybe undercut that a little bit but then jump back into this range between 1.3 and 1.4%. Now, what I, what I don't expect, but what's possible is this, this just blows through 1.4%. Then I think you'd really have, I mean, I think that would be in the fireworks camp. If that just blew through there, you know, in the balance of this week, um, I think that would really put a hammer on some of the high bubble stock valuation names because we've uh, you know been going off these different market keys here. This is the TLT chart trades inverse to the uh, the rate chart. You know we've been in an environment here with a rising TLT, falling rates that benefits those high valuation names. Whereas a falling TLT, rising, rising, 
rising rates favors cyclicals and banks. So on the TLT, we triggered the sell signal on the break of this trend line. And now we've gotten decent follow through. We've got a layer of support here at 146. That is the confluence of the uh, 200 EMA in gold and the green EMA, which is the 50. They're both converging at 146. From a technical standpoint, you'd expect uh, uh, price to come into that level, either bounce or hesitate. We'll have to see. Uh, what I would say is, if you're not in the TLT short trade and we get a break of the 200 and the 50 right here, then I think uh, that would be a decent technical entry if you wanted to play rates and play for a move for TLT proceeding south. And then your line will be, the line you're shooting against is the 200 at 146 and then place your stop above. Now, for those of you, those of you that are, are already in the TLT short trade, that might be a place where, you know, depending on your expiration and your strike and all that stuff, or, you know, I have no idea what you may have, uh, a place to roll down, harvest some of these profits from up here, and then buy yourself some more time and reposition down here uh, for a move uh, lower in TLT, which would be higher rates. Now, what we've seen in the dollar is uh, a quick pop back up to the recent highs, and we've got a resistance layer here at 93.50, let's call it. You get a breakout there, and, you know, I think it really has room to run. I think that's that's got to be the last stand on the dollar if you were expecting it to roll over. Uh, uh, you know, this is an important level right here. And we've had that on, on the board forever. This was the high back here. Uh, and if you go back in the chart, it was support. So... Keep your eye peeled on the dollar. And the reason I say that is because if, if we've got a, a runaway dollar for whatever reason, it's going to be really tough for commodities. And, you know, I've been surprised actually on this little run up here that 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 commodities haven't just fallen apart because that is a headwind for commodities. So we're going to have to watch that really, really close. Uh, okay, let's move on through here, uh, pick up the pace a little bit. This is the equal weight SPY. I mean, bullish. We, we had a long consolidation. We've broken out. Price is above all the moving averages. It's hard to get bear. I mean, it's hard to get bearish when you've got equal weight SPY breaking out and above the 8, 8, uh, 80MA. So, I mean, I mean that looks good to me. Um, could the PPO be higher? Better momentum? Sure. But, I mean, price is talking now. And actually, uh, the equal weight was up 0.47 yesterday. And then when we go over to the cap weight, it was only up 0.12. So, when you have equal weight outperforming the cap weighted index... That just means the uh, more stuff under the surface is uh, is performing rather than you know the top the top five or ten stocks. So that's a good thing as far as uh, breadth is concerned. So here on the spy two hour, uh, as long as you hold four forty two, everything's in good shape. We've got the midpoint that would come in around four forty one. And then I think this 440 is a big level here. If if you come down, lose the midpoint, then lose 440, I think you can almost pencil in a tag of 437, 
436 area to back test these prior lows and to test the low side of the channel. So that those are the levels that I would be looking for on a um, on any kind of break below uh, 442. Then just get your antenna up for the midpoint of the channel here at 441, and then 440 is a is a really big level. Here's the 30 minute chart. We had been in this range that we had been talking about and focusing on. We broke out. We back tested the breakout and now we've moved marginally higher and now we're in this little range between 443 and 442.50. So just going back to our central TA tenants, you don't want to have price come back into this range, right? Once you break out, you want to stay out. If, if we were to come back down here to 441.50, come back inside the range. What do we always say? If you break out, then you come back inside the range. The target is the bottom of the prior range, right? So that puts us right back at, at uh, uh, 436.5. And, and that lines up with a test here, right? So that's how those two connect together. Uh, that's not a prediction. That's just, you know, if that happens, if you get a breakdown below 441.50 and come back in the range, then these are your downside targets. And uh, that would make this breakout look fake. Fake breakout. Uh, here's the... Uh, QQQ, two hour, nasty bar yesterday out of the open. I mean, we opened a little bit up and they, I mean, they just slammed that thing yesterday. So now uh, 367 would be an important level to recapture, right? We came down. Then we tried to get back above this 367 and the next, the following candles could not do it. So the next support level on the way down is 365. And then below that, you've got 362.50, which would be to back test these lows here. And then, of course, your, your kind of your last chance is 361 which was uh, this low here so you know if we were to get a spike in rates today you know off the back of that CPI that would be a scenario where uh, you could see some some selling pressure on uh, on the queues here it is blown up on the 30 minute chart and here were the, you know, we opened up and then two hard sell bars and then, you know, kind of consolidate the rest of the day. But it wouldn't take a lot of imagination to characterize this as a kind of a flat bear flag, right? Back up against resistance at 367 and then for it to take that next leg down which would be a measured move from here down to here. And then again, you're coming back into this 364, 363, 50 area, just on a measured move basis. So, you know, I would characterize this whole thing uh, in the queues the last couple days as a wobble, uh, not inspiring a ton of confidence, that's for sure. Because uh, we'll see it in a minute, but in the... In the fat man names, they've definitely had a change of character. Uh, IWM, I would have thought that the the rise in rates and an emerging rotation into cyclicals would have helped this a lot more. I, I abandoned ship yesterday, more or less running out of time, not because some uh, big uh, technical event, because we really haven't had any. It's just been oscillating here right on this 
uh, 50 EMA, this 222.50 area, and you know it's just been there for for a couple of days now. So I think that is your pivot here at 222.50. It really needs to get above this 224.5 to to get going to the upside. But if it rolls over, I mean, it's shown a uh, that uh, this 218 has been a magnet. I mean, we've had a lot of touches down here at 218. So if this were to roll over, uh, I think that would be uh, your target down here at uh, 218. And here's here it is on the 30 minute chart. You can see that we've just been doing a whole lot of nothing here with a very tight range, uh, not being able to get anything going on. I think if you're a swing trader on the daily time frame, you wait for one of two scenarios to play out. One scenario is a breakout above 224. Get long there, and your target would be way up in like the uh, like 230, something like that at the top of the prior range. If it rolls down here to 218 and holds, that would be a place to get long just for a bounce back up to the top of the range at 224. That's six bucks. That's a nice trade. And then with your stop just below. And if everything falls apart and the world starts ending and you get a breakdown below 218, then you're going to look for a first move to back test this low at 215 and a half. And then if that breaks, then you're back here way back at, at 209 back testing this from way back here so those are the levels and they're pretty clear so um, try and use those uh, if you're gonna try to swing I, IWM in, in either direction uh, if you're new here I hope you like the analysis I, I try really hard to identify the levels for you so you can focus your attention on executing around those levels if you appreciate that kind of uh, coverage hit the alarm bell and the subscribe button that way you'll get all my content on YouTube and then uh, if you want to go the extra mile there's a link in the show notes where you can uh, jump over to the website tradersprofitcompass.com on the home page you can drop your email in that way you'll get uh, any of my content morning noon and night sent right to your email box and that will make it really really convenient for you and also you get an invite to our trading room where um, We've got a uh, vibrant community of uh, active traders that are working hard uh, to not only improve their trading, but to help each other. And uh, that's what community is all about. So we'd love to have you there. Long time listeners, I appreciate the support. Thank you so much for passing my link along to uh, your trading circles and uh, for your help in helping me expand the channel. So. I think what we'll see here is that the fat man names have gone soggy. I don't think it's anything too bearish at this point, but they've lost the they've lost the uh, upward mojo. Uh, Facebook. We've had three consecutive days of strong opens. We have one here. We had one here. And we had one here yesterday and they they've slammed it each time I was positioned long hoping for this gap fill and uh, 362 was the gap opening and it had every opportunity to drive higher over the last um, last three days and uh, has not been able to do it so I I abandoned my Facebook long yesterday not short uh, you know if I see some evidence of okay you know back up above 362 with you know the cues being boldly green and things starting to happen you know I may take another shot at that because this gap is going to get filled I don't know if it's going to get filled now or later but it will get filled eventually so uh, I, I'm I, I would be tempted to re-enter long 
uh, on a break above 362. And actually what I'd probably do is move that entry level up to 364. Why? Because we had all this traffic here between 362 and 364 and it could not break through. So, um, you know, I might move that up to 364 for an entry into the gap uh, just to kind of make price prove it kind of thing. But uh, we've got a, I've got a little trend line here off of this low. That wouldn't be violated until, say, 357, 356. But if it comes down to that point and then rolls over, that'll be a sign that the tech is having some, some problems. And then it would probably come back in here to 348 to uh, test that level. Uh, same kind of idea on Apple. Uh, it's had three, on, on, on three days, it's come up right to this 147.75 area and it's been rejected. That was a bad rejection yesterday. Slammed it from looking like it's going to try to break out. Slammed it right back to the bottom of the range. So today, I think 145.50 is your pivot. Uh, if it can hold above that, I mean, you can, the, 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 the bulls can stay in control. But below that opens up the door to this 144. And then a break of 144 brings you all the way back to 141.50. So those are the downside levels I would be looking at if this trading range uh, breaks down. Tesla had this great move up. 720 proved to be a big problem. And now it's just been oscillating inside this range. Uh, you've got two gaps to fill on the downside. One that starts at 705 and one that starts at like 698, something like that. I think you can treat them uh, essentially as two, two separate gaps just divided by this trend line. But I don't know. It just it doesn't look that bullish to me. Uh, I would think this has had plenty of time to consolidate. And on, on the bull side, you know, if you could get an entry down at, at 700, you could give it a shot there on a gap fill of this first one and then get long against this trend line and try to get a move back up to 720. But on the bigger picture, 720 has to be taken out. And I think once 720 gets taken out and you get this gap fill up to 735, then you've got an opportunity to get to 750. But I think it's really tough trading in here you know, if you want to trade a $700 stock to try and get, you know, $10, uh, I mean, I think that's a tough trade. I think what's been happening in here is just max frustration because, you know, the time decay is, is just, you know, inordinate. You really need to get a, get a clean breakout to, or even a breakdown to, to get some momentum going so that you can uh, do well on your on your calls or your puts but you know when you're oscillating within a 10 or 15 dollar range I think that's really tough trading on, on any security but mostly on on Tesla you know being a seven hundred dollar stock you're not even getting you know I mean it moved four dollars yesterday so, I mean, that's hard to make money there. Uh, Microsoft. I mean, this had looked so hopeful of a breakout. We had a bunch of runs back at 290 here. They knocked it back, found a lot of support down here uh, towards uh, 285. Got the breakout back up to 290 and rejected both times. And then yesterday, we came up, and then they really slammed it. So, uh, again, this looks like a bear flag to me. You know, if it breaks back above 
you know, 28650 and you want to try and fine tune it, that's fine. But now you've got an overhead layer of resistance here at 288. And I would, I would be cautionary on this on the long side, just because this looks like a bear flag. And I think we're probably going to come back in here to uh, test this gap at uh, 283.50. And, you know, if rates or the market gets a little wobbly, maybe come back in to fill this gap down here at, uh, at 282. So anyhow, we definitely know 290 is an important level. I mean, look at all the rejections. So uh, this, is a, this is an important level too. This uh, 284.75 right here where there were a lot of buyers. So that would definitely be an important level on the way down for it to kind of hold before opening up the door to uh, fill this gap. Uh, Amazon, I mean nothing. It's just in this range between 3300 and 3375. I see no reason to get involved in here uh, unless or until we get a breakout above 3375 or we find support down here at 3300. But you get you get a break below 3300. That's going to open up some downside. Uh, Google has remained the best looking one of the bunch, to be honest with you. Um, you know, they knocked it down eight tenths of one, not even that, 0.08%, two bucks. I mean, it's nothing. So this one stays strong. I mean, if, if you get a breakout here, 2760, I think you can take it and look for higher ground. Otherwise, you may come back in here to 2715 and just, you know, consolidate here or even back down to 27 uh, or 2685 right in here. But just remember, you've got an open gap below uh, to be aware of if, if tech gets soggy. Uh, Netflix back here to 515. You know, I, I think you can tell this whole group has just gotten soggy. We had some real good upward momentum for a while, and um, the air has been knocked out of it. So, just from a technical basis, as long as you're above 515, I think you're fine. But while below, you've got this 508 area um, as, uh, as support. Uh, semiconductors. I mean, this, this had looked so good. We had gone up here to 271 and we've just, it started as a slow leak, but then yesterday they opened the trap door and we dropped from 268 uh, all the way down into 263, got a little bounce. But as you see here, I've got this, this penciled in as a bear flag. You see this thing drop out of the flag I think you're going to come back to 260. So I closed out my semis yesterday. I had, um, uh, I was in August calls and, uh, uh, actually was, was nicely green for a while, but, uh, uh kind of held on to him too long. And, uh, this, this track, this uh, drop really got me. So anyhow, I think this one's going to have to regroup. And with this bear flag look, I wouldn't be surprised if it came down and fulfilled that down to 260. Now, if it reclaims 265 and then breaks back above this downtrend line and recaptures 267.50, then maybe it's just a whipsaw. But anyhow, it looks kind of bearish right now. Let me switch gears over here. I just want to run through the Sector Spider ETFs to kind of show you this cyclical uh, trend emerging. We've got XLB, which was material, or which, it, which is materials. It was the first one to break out, and we flagged that last week. We had a nice breakout from this consolidation. We broke above the 50. Now price is above all the moving averages. Now we've got a, uh, the next level of overhead resistance is right here at 85.50. So 
uh, materials have been very strong. We've got PPO breaking above the zero line, and we've got RSI uh, firmly above the 50, uh, 50 midpoint line. So this is looking really bullish. If you get a breakout above 85.50, then you can look towards 88 at the prior highs. Uh, energy has been lagging. We had the rug pull the other day, or last, last few days we've had weakness in oil. So I've got a little consolidation range um, uh, penciled in here. But I think for energy to really get going, it's got to recapture the 50 and get a breakout above uh, 51. Uh, 5150 and then this is the last sector that has not broken out as far as cyclicals are concerned if we go to XLF we pointed out the breakout the other day and we've got nice follow-through so we're right back up at the highs um, on the financials and of course that's you know the big banks and insurance companies and Berkshire Hathaway and all that stuff uh, is is uh, in the XLF. So we're right back up at the prior highs. You get a breakout above, well, get to 38.50, you'd be in blue sky territory. So those of you that like <clears throat> or want to trade the basket could get long against that level. And uh, if we get a wobble on rates and they come back a little bit, and you got a pull into 3750. I think you could uh I think you could buy that and especially if you get a pull back into 3675, you can buy that back test as well. So things are looking good for financials. I've been surprised this is KRE, the regional banking index. Uh came off the lows here at uh uh 6150. Um but you can see there, uh, they haven't been performing as well as the uh, XLF. Not quite sure why. Usually, regional banks are more of a direct play on interest rates than the big banks. So, uh, but I do think these are going to break out. And if you wanted to set yourself an alarm here at uh, 67, I would definitely be buying that breakout in regional banks if uh, if interest rates continue to grind higher I think you're gonna see that in uh, in KRE as well and so yesterday this is uh, XLI the industrials we got a little peak above 104 <clears throat> excuse me peak above 104 and now price is above technical resistance and above all the moving averages. So what I'm looking for here is for simply 104 to hold. And if we get a little follow through today, I think uh, that's going to be a, a good confirming clue that uh, money is uh, starting to flow into industrials. So that's another check mark for the cyclical rotation that... Um, uh, that we've been uh, thinking about, looking for, anticipating, etc. Now let's look at XLK. Nice uptrend. I think the key right here is 153. That is the intersection of lateral support and the midpoint of the channel. You lose 153. Notice this void in volume over price more or less an air pocket, all the way down to 143, where this thing originally had broken out. I think if you get a breakdown below 153, um, and we see further weakness in, uh, in technology, I think there's a real good chance that this comes down at least to test the bottom side of the channel here at 146 and maybe even a chance to move down to 143. So that might be an interesting short for you, for those of you that uh, uh, like to do that. Um, if you get a break below 153, that's gonna be pretty objective 
and you can set your stop right above and then see if you get that move down to 146 because with this air gap here I think it could move uh, pretty quickly uh, staples breaking out here one set or excuse me 7150 um, not that exciting of a category but it but it does show defensiveness I mean if Walmart and and the other defensive names are moving higher you know that says something in and of itself so you know take it for what it's worth I mean you can get long 7150 if you want uh, I'm gonna steer clear of it it's just not my cup of tea but it is breaking out so I think it's important to note um, XLV another defensive type sector um, I think as long as it holds 132 it's fine you may get a little pull in to 131 on this trend line and I would stay long against uh, against this uh, rising trend and uh, no reason to get out uh, at this point at least as far as I can see and so here's XLY and this has gone a little soggy here lately we've got a rising wedge here I think anything below 180 you've uh, really got to sit up and take notice because uh, that was the level that it broke out and any kind of break below this wedge and below 180 is probably going to be a decent short down here to uh, 173 but as long as it stays above you know I think the bulls are fine and remember Amazon is 24% of this index so if you see Amazon lose 3300 that's going to be a big weight on this uh, on this particular index and that may be a little backdoor way of shorting Amazon if you didn't want to be that bold and you saw Amazon falling apart and you saw XLY break 180 that's a check mark for the bears on this one here if you see Amazon breaking down and then this one losing 180 that would give me a lot more confidence of uh, shorting XLY if I got the confirmation that uh, Amazon was breaking down as well so I want to wrap it up here you know I think the CPI is gonna is gonna mean a lot today just watching the reaction uh, you know see what kind of you know everybody's got a narrative you know I I like just trading level to level uh, you know if we see rates you know jump or dive that'll be telling if we see the cyclicals you know really extend today uh, that will be telling as well and I want to watch this fat man you know our Facebook Apple Amazon we know that technology has been um, in the market in general has been rather narrow and we know the 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 weighting on those stocks you know 40 percent of the Nasdaq and 23 24 percent of uh, of spy if the fat man names just simply get soggy I mean that's fine it is what it is you'll see spy and the QQQs kind of get soggy as well not go anywhere but not really go down but if we see a big breakdown in uh, in the fat man names then you've got uh, quite a bit of downside potential in both uh, spy and QQQ and then I think that would be the scenario where you've got the indexes falling but you've got cyclicals ripping under the surface because of their small cap weighting you know their small influence like materials is like three percent of spy energy <clears throat> energy is not much better it's like five percent of spy so you could have those cyclical names doing really really well under the surface while everybody you know is screaming about the cues being down and spy being down so uh, that is something I really want to keep my antenna up on and hopefully we'll be able to get some good entries. So 
Uh, I'm going to keep my nose in uh, in the charts and see if we can get some objective entries uh, in the in the cyclical arena, and uh, you know, kind of we'll watch them, but kind of back off the fat man trade that's been done really well for us for the last ten weeks. But I think that one has uh, uh, cooled down quite a bit. So let's wrap it up there. Hope you guys have a good day of trading. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.